Welcome back to the MUSB Dugout, everyone. I am Scott Hall, and today I am joined by one of the very first members of the Herd Softball program, Carrie Hinkle. Now, Carrie came in with the very first freshman class, playing from 1994 to 97, and was named All Southern Conference four times. Carrie, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Scott. Oh, definitely. I, you know, I love having you all on, especially the players from before I got here and also the ones who were here when the program first started up because I, th this is great for me to be able to hear the stories of how, how things really got rolling with this program because obviously once I got involved with it, things had already been going on for a little while there. But um, before we get going, let everyone know what you've been up to since your playing days. Well, as you know, I graduated in 1997 and I got a degree in finance and business law. So after I graduated, I started working um, for a bank and then they transferred everything to Parkersburg. So I transferred to a law firm and started that. But at the same time, I was taking night classes because I knew probably about my junior year of college that I wanted to go into education and switch my major from business. But because of the NCAA rules, I couldn't do that. So... Um, oh, yeah. stuck with business and um, but luckily for me that um, I was lucky enough to take some summer classes so my senior year I only needed a few more business classes so I picked up a lot of my education classes my, my senior year at Marshall so um, I took some night classes and got my education degree um, and then I taught for a year and I coached softball for a year with my former high school coach which was okay. a lot of fun and um, then I got offered a job with the federal government and um, I took that and I've been working for them now for 20 years. So, um, and in the meantime, while all that was going on, I had three amazing girls, uh, Bailey, who's 18, Brooklyn, 15, and Bentley, who was 13. Um, my boyfriend, Michael Hill, he coaches um, baseball. So currently we're supporting him and, and, and going and watching him play. And occasionally at the home games, I'm asked to announce. So that's very interesting. Okay. <laughs> but it's fun. Um, so yeah, the girls play sports and they're involved in a lot. So I just work and then, you know, surround myself supporting the girls and, and Michael and, and his coaching. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, now, where is he coaching? He coaches at Fairland. Fairland? And he's okay. At Fairland as well. Okay. All right. It's fun, and it's funny that you talk about you know not being able to change your major because the way the NCAA you know can have things set up because there was one year we had a player transfer to Marshall from Alderson Broadus and she was deemed academically ineligible because of I guess the way her classes didn't line up coming from AB to Marshall and they said well if you change your major then you can stay eligible and she said well I'm not going to change my major. So we had a player on our team who was academically ineligible with a 3.8 GPA, as if that makes sense. You know, I mean, she, she, almost, she has almost a 4.0, and she's told, you know, academically you can't play. I, you know, it's, right. it's crazy. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I get it in some circumstances. It's necessary, I guess, um, just to make sure that people are focusing on the academic portion of it. But at the same token, those people who are there for the academics and just want to switch their major, because at 18, that's hard to decide exactly what you want to do for the rest of your life. So, you know, um, that's what it, it got me there, the 25, 50, 75 percent rule or, or whatever. Yeah. It was something like that. Oh, yeah. The, the percentage towards your degree by year by exactly. year. That's what yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's go ahead and step back then. So w when did you start playing softball? I was young, and I actually picked up a baseball first. So um, I played baseball, uh, and it was up near Zanesville, Ohio, that area. That's where okay. I'm originally from. Um, we didn't move down here into the sixth grade. but So I started playing baseball first um, because softball wasn't real popular or known of for the girls in that area at the time. So I played baseball, and I was actually selected for the all-star team for the boys team. Um, however, because I was a girl, the other coaches didn't really, um, or I should say the other dads didn't really want me to my knowledge. This is what, you know, I was told. I don't, I don't really know all of it, but, um, and my dad was upset about that. So he went and talked to the other um, coaches and, you know, said if she earned it, you know, she deserves to play whether she's a girl or, or on a boys team or whatever. And so I did eventually get on the all-star team um, and played there. And then I transferred over to slow pitch softball um, because again, fast pitch just wasn't, wasn't a thing in that area at the time. And then when I moved down here, sports for girls were, uh, 
more known, I guess. Um, I, I moved down here in the sixth grade, and that's the first time I picked up a basketball and um, started playing fast pitch softball. So, so sixth grade, fast pitch. Okay. And now, you know, reading your bio in high school, you played three sports, volleyball, basketball, and softball, so busy in all three. Uh, you know, when did you kind of start thinking about trying to go on to college and playing, and was it always softball or were the other three, or were the other two uh, ever an option for you? You know, I think basketball was my front runner, to be honest. Um, I, I was getting more noticed for basketball than I was softball. And, um, you know, like Christy was talking about, we made the VHSs, we mailed them out to different colleges. And I had this really nice guy um, who was a, a parent, a girl that was a teammate of mine. And he helped me do all that. He videoed the games. He actually went through into the highlights and all that good stuff. And we were able to send that out. But yeah, I would say basketball was the front runner. Um, I had very small offers with volleyball, um, you know, being five, four, five, five. Uh, volleyball probably wasn't my strength. Um, so, um, well, you could say that for basketball too, I guess, but a point guard, you don't have to be all that tall, I guess. Um, so yeah, so basketball was my front runner, but then, you know, my, my, my high school coach, um, was very encouraging and, you know, telling me that I needed to consider that. And then coach Burnt came over and watched one of my games. And then I got, you know, some offers with softball as well. So then I had to start to think, you know, which one do I want to do for four years after I graduate? And then, you know, things came into factor, like the facilities where I'd be playing, the time of year I'd be playing, where I was getting the most offers and how much money is there on the table. And then I, you know, I just started thinking about what's, what's harder on my body. <laughs> and at the time I thought basketball was going to be harder on my body. Um, and so I, I chose to sort of go towards softball for mm -hmm. a couple reasons. Um, you know, like coach uh, was saying, you know, softball's outside. Um, <laughs> it's in the spring yeah. Uh, yeah. for the most part. I mean, we're a little bit in the winter at the beginning, but for the most yeah. part it, it's in the spring. Um, so, you know, I just, I just, looked at my offers, looked at my opportunities, and, and I decided to go with, with softball. So just led me there. Well, and, and of course, lucky enough for you, once you did come to Marshall, you got to spend all your four years in the Southern Conference. So you didn't get that into the MAC, you know, having to go no. to <laughs> in, in shorts, mind you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All those, all those old uniforms, it was all shorts, and you better have the long socks and the sliders. On right. and, and, yep. Um, but now, you know, but still within high school, I mean, you won the Ohio Valley Conference title in all three sports. I mean, that, that had to feel pretty impressive to be able to do that. Yeah, you know, when you look back and you think about, you know, the accomplishments, um, winning the OVC and, and all that, those titles are awesome. But when you look back and think about all those things, it's really the memories that you make with your teammates, the mm -hmm. bus rides, the, you know, going to and from the games and, and just listening to your music and singing and, and all that. So the wins are nice. They really are because nobody likes to lose, especially if you're competitive. Yeah. But when you think back of all that stuff, it's, not the basket scored or, you know, the hit, the, the RBI. It's more of the memories with your teammates um, that sort of stick with you. Now, I, okay, you've already talked about how you were kind of getting recruited coming out of Fairland. Now, so what was Coach Burns recruiting sales pitch to you to get you to come to a brand new program? It hasn't even been, a, haven't even, they haven't even played a season yet. You're going to be on the first team. So what was that like? You know, to be honest, um, she wasn't really aggressively recruiting me. Um, and you, I can't tell you the reasons for that, but she did come to a game and she did talk to me and she did tell me the opportunities that were there. But at the time, she really didn't know how much money she would have, you know, mm -hmm. to, to be able to offer. So even though those, all those things sounded great about the opportunities being right across the river from home, um, you know, that sounded really good. Um, but I think I, I don't know every, everybody else's circumstances because mm -hmm. we really didn't talk about that because it was just so unknown, you know, going yeah. in and, and not sure what was happening. Um, you had to fight for your position. And, you know, I can remember it was more like a tryout thing that, you know, and coach would tell us, you know, I can't guarantee you money. I don't know how much I'm going to have. I don't know where, you know, where it's going to go. Um, but, I did decide um, to go to Marshall um, 
you know, because I did have some opportunities at OU, but I decided to go to Marshall and stick it out and went through those, those tryouts. It's like nothing I've ever been through in my life. Um, they were hard and, you know, it was tough. And then you're looking around because you really don't have any camaraderie at that point to look to see who's, you know, because everybody's, you know, bidding for a spot. Um, so, you know, as far as her recruiting, it was just more like, here's the opportunities. Here's what we have. I d can't guarantee you, you know, anything, but you will get a play. And you will. so you went there. And then I think, you know, about a couple months afterwards, she got the financial stuff situated. If I recall that correctly, um, she got the financial stuff situated because I was in a position that, you know, I wasn't getting any financial aid. My parents were right at that line. And, but yet my parents also couldn't afford to sit there and say, here's, you know, whatever it was back then. Yeah. Four, five grand. Here you go. Um, go to school. So, um, you know, that's my main goal was, you know, I wanted money to be able to play and to be able to get my school paid for. Um, so luckily that did work out for me. And, you know, she, she did give me enough money to cover that. Um, and then the next year, I, you know, it was a little bit more and then, you know, everything was covered with a, with a little bit of a, um, I think it was tuition and and board room and board or something like that. I can't yeah, remember probably. what it was titled, but I know that I would see, I think coach Gail or coach Gail's wife when I would go in there and, and oh, yeah. my checks. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, good. Well, you know, I, you've already talked about the, that first fall a little bit feeling like everything was a tryout, but you know, I mean, really how was it, you know, trying to mix in with everybody because there were some people who were semi-local but also, too, you had players coming in from the West Coast, you know, from California and all that. So here you've got a whole different, just different mix of people that you're not used to, obviously, and you're trying to make a team out of it. Right. Yeah. You know, that freshman year, I can just remember, and I think everybody who came in that year, um, now the older girls like Laura, um, also known as Belle to me, so I might refer to her as Belle from here on out. Um you know, she had already had a year under her belt. So, you know, even though I didn't know her that well at the time we had just met, she sort of took me under her wing and, and helped me out tremendously um, to adjust because, you know, coming from high school, being the athlete who was recruited in more than one, one sport. Um, and, you know, it sort of seemed like it came easy for that level. Um, but when you're going to the next level, it's a whole different ball game. So the transition of just going there and coach telling me, you know, that I need to correct this in my hitting that, you know, I need to, you know, on an inside, uh, on throwing from the infield, it's different than throwing from the outfield and, you know, just different things that maybe just because your natural ability didn't get picked up in high school, what you needed to correct to make it at the collegiate level was picked up on by coach. And she, she made sure that you were going to be in the best position to be successful at that level. And it wasn't always what you wanted to hear. Oh yeah. But <laughs> at the same token, it, it, you know, at the time it didn't feel good. So it messed sort of with your mental game. Um, and then on top of that, trying to transition to the academic world in college, um, because back then they didn't have CCP classes and different things like that to give you a little taste of what college was like. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was really difficult to, to go in and, and, and try to maintain the same GPA and, and expectations, I guess, for yourself as a freshman that you did in high school, um, because the college academics was so much different. You had so much freedom and the professors didn't really, I mean, they cared, but it was your responsibility. They weren't going to yeah. sit there and say, Hey, you don't have this assignment turned in. So it's just different. So there was a lot of adjustment coming from high school to, to college and, you know, luckily in that environment of still like sort of trying to get your position and trying to feel like you fit there, the girls that were recruited and the girls that came in were so easy to get along with and approachable. Uh, Missy Frost, Tracy Mann, uh, Belle, you know, those are just a few that just we really clicked instantly and it was sort of, it made it a little easier, that transition and, and that feeling of sort of desperation to get your spot <laughs> well and then obviously too I mean you're close to home but uh but you would still like to like you said really click with your teammates and make it feel like yeah even though home is right there I still have a good spot here I have you know I'm around people that I care about that they care about me we're playing together and all that so 
I mean, that definitely helps. That's always good when you can come in as a freshman and, and still find, you know, something right away, especially on a brand new team. <laughs> right, exactly. And, you know, and, yeah. and we did have West Coast girls too, Brandy Northrup. And I, I remember, you know, thinking how homesick that, you know, they must be, you know, mm -hmm. in that situation. And we would always try to have like family dinners and we'd invite them out for soup and, and different things like that to make them feel at home as possible. Because, you know, that's a yeah. That's a huge trip you know, from yeah. California to, to Huntington, West Virginia. Yeah, a couple thousand miles and a little culture shock, you know, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> sure, it's very, very different. But so now, talk about what you kind of remember from that first season, from 1994, where, you know, everybody's just really trying to feel each other out and get yourself into the motion of now playing Division One softball. I mean, you, you did have – Obviously, a couple players who had the experience of that, Jeannie Noble at Moorhead State and Heather Michaelis at Ohio State. But other than that, everybody else was pretty much brand new to it at the college level. You know, Scott, I don't know if I'm wrong or not in my years, but I may be. But I don't think Jeannie and, and Heather were there. The first. Jeannie may have been, but I don't think yeah. Heather was. And I, they, they both were, yeah. They were? Yes. My freshman year, Heather was there. Yes. Okay, well then I'll just take your word for it. Um, I don't remember them being there my freshman year, but that may have been the nerves and everything else that was going going along with that. Um, but you know, I, I I can just remember that you know we did a lot of team building activities. I think it was my freshman year, but I may be wrong again. We did the ropes course up in Columbus, um, okay. and that was terrifying in itself. You know, you were really high. You had to count on each other to get each other across different you know courses, and and it was fun. But you were definitely trembling when you were up in the up in the air um counting on everybody to get you through and um you know so like i said we had several different personalities but there were really no conflicts i mean we were like a family of course there were disagreements there were things that you know we liked and didn't like about things but for the most part there was really no drama that i can recall mm. um and that made it nice and that you know because i think everything you know was so brand new and we didn't know what we were doing and our focus was always on you know conditioning classes practice and then after that with it being brand new we were painting locker rooms putting yep. up new hats, you know that kind of stuff that didn't have the funds for so the players and coaches were doing that and put a lot of those extra hours into that to make sure that we had you know the facility that we needed I, that was something coach talked about, you know, uh, painting the dugouts and obviously trying to tell the construction people, no, you don't put the foul pole inside the field that goes outside the field. It's a safety hazard. You know, you don't want your outfielders obviously crashing into this hard pole, you know, while they're going after a ball. And then, and then I think she said to the on deck circle, they put it outside on the basketball courts, not in on the field. And it's like, my goodness, who's thinking about this? Right. Thing? But, there was no oversight. I don't think. Yeah. Except for coach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What good thing she was there, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, but you know, you get through that first season. A seventeen and twenty-one record is is I would think still impressive for a brand new program because you see a lot of times, you know, brand new team they might win maybe you know maybe six to eight games something like that. But uh, you always were still pretty close to five hundred. So obviously, you've got the talent. It, it's in place there. And you know, what did it mean to you? get to the end of your freshman year and you're named all conference. You know, I, I was thrilled. Um, but of course it was nothing expected. Um, and you know, I, I appreciated the acknowledgement of that. Um, but of course, like I said, it, it was not expected and, um, I was honored to, to get that honor. So, and I appreciated, I don't know if coach nominated, I don't know how that worked back then. Um, but I did appreciate them acknowledging my efforts and, you know, the contribution that I gave to the team. I do know how it goes now. Not quite sure, obviously, what it was back then. But the SID and the coach would talk together about who do they want to nominate. And then it's voted on by the coaches, excuse me, and the rest of the conference. Okay. So, you know, just because you get nominated, obviously, then doesn't mean that you make the team. So, if, if, it was, yeah, if it was the same way back then, obviously, the other coaches respected you enough, you know, with your ability there to, to put you on the all-conference team. But – so now, okay, your, your sophomore year, things start to be kind of getting together a little bit more. And what do you remember about your sophomore year? I mean, obviously more games played before getting to the conference tournament. 
You know, what I remember about my sophomore year is that, um, you know, number one is that we had our field. You know, that was our first year having our field between the Henderson Center and the Twin Towers, which was an amazing location for a field. Um, you know, we had people who would open up the windows and, you know, I can remember that. And, you know, they would either get the, the umpire a hard time or oh. the other team, you know, <laughs> and of course cheer us on. And then, you know, you'd have your stragglers walking through, you know, just because they left practice, whether it be track team, football players or coming from class. And they would stop. So I felt like that we got more support and people knew of us our sophomore year a little bit more, of course, being our second year. Um, you know, also, we won the championship. Um, so that was that was really exciting. Um, and we weren't expected to win. Uh, we were we were, I think, seated fourth. Um, mm, yeah. And it was it, it was at Furman um, because I, I loved playing at Furman. That was my all time favorite field. Um, the, the grass was so nice. Um, so, you know, those things uh, about my sophomore year. And I also remember that, you know, we still had to sort of prove ourselves to people, even though we won the championship, you know, when we came back home, um, we were excited, we were, you know, celebrating. And, you know, we were super excited about getting our championship rings, you know, that was, that was a huge deal. So, and I could just remember, and I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but I just remember that, you know, we didn't know for sure if we were going to get the rings or not because they didn't have the funding for it. So, you know, that was a disappointment when we came back. And um, luckily that Ryan Turner, he is, um, he was the, I think the student body president, I believe. Okay. If I'm, if I'm right, I don't, I think, that, but I know he was a part of the student body and um, he actually heard of that. And so he, you know, volunteered to give money um, to our program to be able to help with the purchasing of our, our rings. And um, now to the, today, Ryan Turner is the husband of Bell. So, just okay. so, and then, you know, Matt and Stephanie are married as well. And Matt was our uh, manager. So, you know, um, but yeah, our, our, our sophomore year, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of things that were memorable. And I'd say that the highlight was, of course, winning the championship. Mm -hmm. Well, and especially the way you all did it, too. I mean, you roll through Chattanooga 4-0, to zero, and Chattanooga always seemed to be a team that kind of had your all's number during the regular season as well. So, I mean, that's got to be pretty good to get that game on them in the first round. Then you beat Georgia Southern 5-3, to three, and then you just kind of roll right over Furman 7-1. to one, And at their place, I mean, I'm sure right. it helps out a lot, too, to, you know, not just beat them, but beat them pretty soundly at their own home stadium. You know, when they're hosting, thinking, hey, this will be an easy championship. We're at home. This will be great. And instead, you all walk away with it. Yeah, we snuck up on them for sure. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. Sure. They had the home field advantage. But, you know, I think that, you know, just everything came together that weekend. Mm -hmm. And we were playing very well together. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of hits that don't normally – like, I hate to keep saying if I recall correctly, but, you know, yeah. this was a while ago. Yeah. Um, I think that's when Missy got a home run. And that wasn't typical. I mean, she was a hitter, but that, you know, uh, so she got a home run that game, I believe, um, uh, in that tournament. And, um, you know, it, it was an exciting feeling, and, and it was good. And it was, it was shocking, too. Like, there was just so many emotions that went into that weekend. Um, and it was good to come home with a win. Well, now, speaking of going home, I've heard the story of the uh, broken down van that Coach Burns said, nope, forget it, leave it, we're going home, we're going home to celebrate. Now, she did say, though, that there weren't as many of you around because some players were able to kind of go home with their parents. So now, were you a part of that, the, uh, the broken down van, or were you one that was able to kind of sneak away with your family? I was not one that was able to sneak away with my family. So, yeah, I can remember Missy and I um, just sitting outside on the buckets because, you know, you've, you have the equipment and, you know, you're trying to take that with you and trying to figure out how we're going to pack everything in there. So, um, yeah, but we, you know, that's not the only adventure story in the vans. We had plenty. I can remember coming home from, I believe, Columbus or somewhere in that area. Um, and Hanging Rock in Ohio is a speed trap you can go one mile per hour over and you're going to get pulled over. And we saw the blue lights quick. <laughs> so, you know, there were, there were plenty of good band stories. Um, that's for right. sure. Cause we were in that band a lot. Well, and, and that was, that was the thing that, you know, when I, when I talked to coach that she said was that you all in the beginning, 
you, you didn't have the bus. So it was everybody in the vans. I, Jeannie Noble talked about how she had to occasionally drive one of the vans, which just cracks me up. I love that. <laughs> um, I mean, in, in, in my time, we always had the buses, but we would get vans whenever we flew somewhere. So, you know, right. into a place, then we get the vans. And a lot of times I got to drive and I, I love driving, but I, I, equip, I drove the equipment van, of course. So I've, I'm the one who's got to shovel all this stuff in there, all the equipment, all the suitcases and everything. I got to be pretty good at packing vans <laughs> for that particular reason. But, I, you know, sometimes when you got to drive in some of those cities, it's just insane. So, I mean, I could imagine you all having to do this every trip, you know, not just the occasional one here. It's every trip you all are in the vans. I mean, that's... I think, I think when I played, we only flew once. And other than that, it was in the vans. And, you know, we went to Florida. Um, yeah. Uh, but, you know, memories were made. We played oh, Spades. Yeah. Uh, that was the big game. Um, Amy, which her nickname's Desi. So, I... I'll probably refer to her as that. You know, she and I were always partners at Spades. Everybody wanted to take us down. We were unsuccessful. No, I'm just kidding. But we did have fun. We had fun and we played, you know, games. We were studying, playing games, or it was so late we were exhausted and we just tried to find a way to get ourselves comfortable and, and sleep. So, um, but yeah, we, we were on the van. And then if you, you think about it, our freshman year, um, you know, you t told me our record, I think maybe only seven to 10 games were at home because we didn't yeah. have a field. So, you know, we got very familiar with the vans. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, there's actually been a few times where I've offered like, look, if you don't want to deal with equipment on a plane, just pack me in a van. I swear I'll drive it there. I have no problem. Just, just give me some music. I'll put the window down, sing my heart out and I'll be good. I don't care how right. far I have to drive, but now nah, we, we still end up having to get on the planes, but so now, you know, one, one other thing, you know, because obviously you talked about, you know, you played volleyball, you played basketball, you played softball, so obviously a multi-sport athlete. Now, Coach Byrne talked about, you know, your versatility and how great it was to have you and the fact that, you know, if she needed you at a certain position, that you basically said, you know, okay, yes, you know, put me there, I'll do it. Um, so how many positions did you play at Marshall? You know, I, I was recruited, I think, that I was looked at mostly for center field um, mm -hmm. because that's where I played my senior year of high school, although I also played shortstop some in high school as well. So I was recruited mainly for center field, and that's where I thought that I was going to, you know, have my position my freshman year, but it just worked out that she needed a shortstop. So, you know, I played shortstop my freshman year mainly. Um, and then I also played a little bit of first base. Um, we needed – we needed me – I don't recall why, but we needed me there for some reason. And then also, at, I believe UNC, she called me up to catch. So I caught as well. So I think it's been catcher first. It just goes sort of a zigzag right up the yeah. middle. Um, catcher first, short, and then center. And did you like being just put wherever? It didn't matter. Did you like being in all the yeah. different positions? I loved it. I didn't care as long as I was playing. And whatever the team needed at the time, you know, I think coach knew that. So whatever the team needed at the time, I didn't mind at all. Um, you know, I'd try my best. I, I don't know that I was always the best at that position, but I would definitely give it my all. Now, was there one position that you liked particularly more than the rest of them? Or did, yeah. or did you just really enjoy them all? They were all different. They were also different. Um, you know, I think the similarities of short and center, um, at least I felt that way. I felt more comfortable at short and center. Um, but I loved catching uh, that one game I, I just there was something about that and I think that I maybe threw a girl out at second and that was just the best feeling um so I, I you know I just remember that and just being sort of in charge and calling the game and different things like that even if it was coming from coach it just I don't know there was a different feeling about being behind the plate all right so runner caught stealing added in with uh with everything else that you've done you know, I hope I'm not making that up. And coach, if I am, just go ahead and correct me. I, I, I do remember that feeling of, of how good that felt and like that rush. Um, so it, well, it was. Well, the unfortunate thing with, with some of the stats that I've been able to find, it doesn't have a lot of those, 
which bothers me because I would like to see obviously what the old catchers did in those years. And so if I ever get to find them, you know, maybe I will see, you know, that, that one column caught stealing by your name, there might be a one right there, you know, yeah, maybe, I don't know, but you know, our catchers <laughs> were really good and, and Heather and Shannon Strozier, mm -hmm. you know, they, they were really good. So I, I don't know even the situation. I can't recall why I needed to be behind the plate that game, but I, I, I did. So, um, but yeah, the catchers that we had, they, they were, they were really good and they, they got a lot of games and innings in. Oh, yeah. I don't know how their knees are now, but they got a lot of innings in. <laughs> <laughs> Always got to worry about those knees with catchers. But so now, what was the feeling and the mentality of you and the team going into your junior year? You're coming off of winning the Southern Conference Tournament in just your second season. Right. And obviously, the team wasn't expected to do it, you know, things like that. But kind of what was the feeling going into then your third year? You know, we got some transfers in, we got new recruits in, and then we still had some of the players that came because some, some of the players didn't come back and, and, and some of them did. Or, and then others, we got, like I said, the transfers and the recruits. Um, and that year specifically, um, I can remember, you know, we got a transfer in Amy Anderson, which that was my mm -hmm. space partner. Um, she played third base. So, you know, we, we picked up the spots that we need to pick up. Um, and I think that we went into it thinking that, you know, with us winning that conference that anything was possible. And, you know, I think our goal at that point was to get a bid and to try to, you know, just keep improving. And, um, you know, and coach continued to, to give us a, you know, a challenging schedule. Um, I, and I don't know how much her hands were in that, but I know that she would want that um, at the time. So, you know, we were excited and, and we thought that, you know, with us winning the conference that, you know, anything was possible and that we can go in there and do it. Um, and, and the girls that were returning were more comfortable, um, you know, academic wise, you know, we're sort of getting their groove with that. And then also, you know, understanding what was going to take place in fall ball and the conditioning and the, you know, the 6am runs and, you know, um, than weightlifting and, and just being able to sort of manage all that stuff that you had to manage between everything. I think that you were just more comfortable and more confident in, in what you were doing. So we were, we were excited for the, for that year. So did this kind of help validate maybe your reasons, your reasons then for going to Marshall and here it is just your third year and just the third year of the program. You all are already looking to try and get to the NCAA. I mean, it's not okay. Maybe we can get a few more wins. Maybe we can do better in the tournament you won the tournament the year before and you're seeing the wins and you're seeing the talent. I mean, that had to feel pretty special too. Yeah, it did feel very special, you know, and, and to be honest with you, uh, until we were able to accomplish those things, that was sort of out of reach in my mind, mm -hmm. you know, just that, that kind of thing, you know, because I, I think it was my freshman year. Um, I was fortunate enough to be selected to participate in the yes clinic and go out and watch the world series. So I got a little bit of a taste of what that was like and, just the excitement and um, the competitiveness of it all. And it, it was just really neat to be able to participate in that and, and witness that with my own eyes because I had never been out there and done anything like that or to witness the World Series and the Hall of Fame and, and different things like that. So I was very fortunate to do that. Um, so then once we won that conference, it sort of opened my eyes, like maybe this is a possibility. And so going into the junior year and senior year, you know, that was always our hope to be able to do that. How do you like, because obviously you got to obviously see, you know, Hall of Fame Stadium back then. So how do you like the fact of how much it's grown? I mean, to really also show the popularity of the sport and how much it's grown that they keep saying, hey, we've got to add more seats to this place. It's amazing. And it's so good. You know, having three daughters, you love to see that, you know, just people embracing that and loving the sport and wanting to come watch the girls play. Um, you know, I love it. I love every part of it. And um, I think it just shows how, how far this sport has grown. You know, when I played, like, you know, you talk about playing every sport, I played every sport, but you know, I didn't have the travel ball options. And I didn't have, I don't know that I would have because I loved my seasons, I love my sports. But now even, you know, coach talking about going out west to recruit, well, they played all year long, even then. But around here, you didn't hear of a travel ball team. But now, you know, you could flip a quarter in any county and you're going to find about three or four um, travel ball teams, you know. So it's great to see how much the sport has progressed and how – so many fans are just wanting to go watch it because it's a great game to watch. It's fun. 
Oh yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, obviously I love it or else I wouldn't have been around it all this time. <laughs> well, you, uh, do great. you do great at what you do. So we appreciate oh. it. I, well, thank you. I, um, if, if I had known I was going to be around the team this long, I would have done a lot better job of keeping a lot of the old videos from when I first started because I would love to be able to have those video clips to share. But um, so now in your junior year, you set a team record with 69 hits, lasted till 2003, and is in fact still ninth all time in martial history. So that number's still up there. You know, the team rolls out 38 wins, but just couldn't quite that, couldn't, let me try that again, take two, couldn't quite find that magic there in the, in the uh, conference tournament this time. So yeah, talk about that season a little bit. You know, I don't specifically remember the season other than, you know, of course, we didn't win other than my sophomore year as far as the Southern Conference goes. Um, I know that we had a more difficult season um, as far as our schedule was concerned that year. I, I, if, I'm, if I recall correctly, I think that's when we went down to Florida State. Um, and I think we played UCLA, um, you know, and just different teams like that that, you know, wasn't even on our radar being a third year, fourth year. It was, I'm pretty sure it was my junior year. Um, you know, things like that. So we had a more difficult season. And, I don't, you know, that usually prepares you for the conference. So, um, you know, I, I think that it was a disappointment that we didn't, you know, repeat, I guess you would say. But at the same token, I think that we were still proud of the accomplishments that, that the team as a whole made. So, um, you know, we were on to the next year. So now, well, how was that senior year for you? I mean, you know, this, this, is, this is pretty much going to be it for you. You have won a title, but obviously you'd like to be able to get another one. Just, just kind of talk about that last year. You know, the last year, um, there was mixed emotions going into it, you know, because you're more confident. You sort of know who you are a little bit better than you did when you were going in as fresh as 17, 18 mm -hmm. years old. Um, so, you know, your senior year going into it, there's, there's uh, like I said, all kinds of emotions. And you want to do the best, and you want to see the program succeed, and you want to win any championship and possibly get a bid, if possible, you know, to sort of go out with a bang. Um, but it didn't happen, and, uh, and that's okay. But because what happened during that four years uh, and the things that I've accomplished um, in that four years and the friends that I made and my teammates – um, that has lasted a lifetime, um, you know, so I'll never, ever be able to get those, those times back with them. And so thinking back now, um, I, I miss that. Um, and I miss the communication, the camaraderie that I have with the team. But as far as going in for goals and, and what you expected, of course, we wanted to win. Um, and we wanted to bid, but it, we didn't, we didn't do it. We came up short. Well, I, you still at least have one title, you know, during your yeah. lifetime there. So, but now what was it like to play for coach Burt? You know, coach Burt was very demanding, um, you know, and she, she had um, high expectations for us, which, you know, that's understandable. We're, we're getting paid to do a job. Um, and, you know, she would communicate those expectations with us and um, she would let you know when you weren't meeting those. And, you know, she was tough as far as conditioning is concerned. Um, I was in the best shape of my life those four years um, between running the track, running the cemetery, running the park. Um, matter of fact, our junior year, I believe it was our, Amy's first year there. Um, I think in our thread that we talked about, because after these interviews, you know, it sort of, you know, sparks up some conversation. Yeah. Um, we sort of talked about that, that, that we were wondering where, um, Amy was and we couldn't find her and she actually got lost running to Ritter Park and back. Now, mind you, she's from California and that was her first yeah. year in, Dallas, in West Virginia. So, wow. um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, we would do that conditioning. We do racquetball. We would do swimming. Mm -hmm. Um, the swimming, whew, I probably need to start doing that again. Um, but yeah, she would, she would, she was tough as far as conditioning and preparing us for the season. Um, but we had good times too. You know, it was like a family. She would have uh, parties at her house as far as like Halloween or just, you know, a dinner at her house and we'd come over and, um, and do that kind of stuff. And then we also did that with, um, with Laura's parents, you know, we tried to get together as, as much as possible and she encouraged that. Um, so, you know, she was tough, one of the best for us, and would communicate that with us and, and made sure that, you know, we understood what she needed from us. 
Now, what are some of your best memories from your playing days, either on or off the field? I know you kind of already talked about how most of the things you remember really are off the field, but what are some of your best memories? You know, I, the memories that I have is, is you know, I, I have both on and off the field, but the most that I take with me, it's not so much about, you know, the hits. So, mm -hmm. so listening to you sort of rattle off those numbers, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. Because those things don't really stick out to me. But the things that I remember the most are just the, the friendships that I made over the years, the Halloween parties, um, the recruits coming in and preparing for that. Um, and then we would do, like I said, the ropes course, and then we'd stay at Tracy's parents' house. And I think some of us stayed at Missy's house, if I recall correctly, because I think they were pretty, pretty close in, in location. Um, and then we went to the beach uh, as, a, as a team, and we did that. We rode, uh, I think it was coaches jet skis, I believe. Um, so we did things like that. Um, but as far as on the, on the field, you know, it's, it's, it's mostly just prepping for the game. Um, not so much the wins or losses, but just um, being happy for others and, you know, the cheers that we would do or the lack of the cheers. And then, you know, the other players would get upset because of the lack of cheers. So then we'd have to start cheer, you know, just those kinds of things that's, you know, when you think back of it, it's, it's comical and, and, you know, it's good time. So I enjoyed well, all four years. Well, what was it like being somebody to have to kind of take care of the recruits when they would come into town? You know, it was, it was fun. Uh, you know, um, we would have certain places that we would take them. And then, you know, uh, myself and uh, Stephanie had an apartment together my sophomore year. And then Christy and Amy generally roomed together. And Laura and Hallie generally roomed together. So, you know, we had those different places that, or and Missy and Tracy would normally room together. So we had those different places that we would go to a person's apartment and we'd take them there and then we'd show them around Huntington, um, which back then it was a lot different than it is now. So <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Um, yeah. So, so having the recruits, it was neat and, you know, and, and trying to tell them why they should come to Marshall because we were all having great experiences there. So it was fun and I would take them around in my 1981 silver Oldsmobile. So I don't know how much they thought of that. But. <laughs> I, well, it's wheels, you know, I mean, it's it, wheels. It gets that's around. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's pretty good. I like that. Um, but do you, do you have any, you know, any crazy stories I and mean, obviously appropriate ones that still make you smile and laugh? I mean, obviously you've talked about, you know, how travel adventures, you know, things breaking down here, you get stuck here, you know, whatever it is, but are, are there any stories that you look back at and they still just bring a smile to your face? You know, I think that, I think we were playing in Florida. Um, I just remember that we didn't have such a great game that, that day. Um, and I can remember coach just finding a field in the middle of nowhere um, and pulling off and we got some practice time. In. <laughs> so I can remember that. I can remember stopping at, um, uh, I think it's Ryan's. Is that the chain that's down in the Carol, like in the southern part? I, it, of it sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, I can remember we ate there often. Um, mm. I don't know why that sticks out, but it does. Um, that could be good or bad. <laughs> good or bad. Um, <laughs> and then I can just remember that, like I said, the van trips is you know playing spades um, with Amy, and then everybody challenging us, and we may or may not have had signals. I don't know, but <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, yeah, the spades games, I can remember that. And then also, you know, um, Jeannie was getting married during that time. I, I think it was maybe her senior year. And I can remember the bachelorette party for her at, at Laura's um, parents' house. Um, so that was, that was a nice time. But I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of specifics oh, yeah. because um, – it was a good time and, and we had plenty of memories and, and you doing all these interviews and, and talking to girls that played during that time um, is a lot of fun to watch and it just brings up those memories and it allows us that opportunity to get back together and talk about it and, and have a good time with it. I, well, I'm glad and, and I have Jeannie Noble coming up too. I've already talked to her, but obviously need to get to that one to edit. But, you know, so, well, in, in, obviously reconnecting with your teammates and everything, you know, what does it mean to you to be one of the building blocks of the success of this program? Because you also kind of alluded to earlier in that, you know, back then the travel teams didn't exist. You know, now I, you know, like you said, you could just toss a coin somewhere and here's three or four of them that you can go on. 
But a lot of that, especially here in this state in West Virginia, can really be attributed to Marshall. I, they're the only D1 program in the state. You all got that started. I mean, how does that, what, what does that mean to you as an alum and being able to see, one, the success of this program, but two, also the success of really the game building around here? Right. It's changed a lot. That's for sure. And, you know, as far as being part of the first members of the team um, back in 94 to 97, I think that a lot of heart, dedication and um, focus went into it from coach all the way, you know, all the team, you know, teammates, all of us, we, we dedicated that time. And I think that all of us laid that foundation that was pretty solid for the next people to come along and just pick that right back up and build off of it. Um, but just to see the progress where the sport has, you know, from that time till now, it's amazing. I mean, I take my girls over and Belle and I try to meet up once, you know, every year to go to a game together and take our daughters. Um, but just to see the amount of people in the stands, the amount of people that's filling the parking lot in the back, you know, it, it, it's nice to see. Um, and it's great to be a part of it. And I, I do agree that I think that Marshall softball has a lot to do with uh, the growth of the game in this area. Um, and now we're able to compete with the Californias and the Alabamas and the Georgias and, and things of that nature as, as far as recruiting. We've had a lot of good athletes come out of this area. Well, exactly. You know, you're able to now see a whole lot of successful players. I mean, obviously you were local, you know, being from right across the river and to have players continue who are from around this area and have all the success that they've had, like recently with Ashley Goo and Andy Williamson being able to help win that championship there, Morgan Zirkle, the things that she's done. I mean, Amazing. you I mean, you really are kind of a part of that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I don't, you know, I don't know consider how much, but I do appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Four-time all-conference. I mean, come on. But – Okay, so obviously you've, you've been to the new field and you've seen the crowds that come there. And, and that's one, too, that I, I always like talking to a lot of the newcomers when they're just amazed at how many people show up to even a fall ball game. You know, obviously not this year because of COVID, you know, right. can't have anybody come out. And, but, you know, I, they're just amazed. They go, gosh, this, this game doesn't even count. We're not even going to turn the scoreboard on. You know, I, it, none of this. But there's a couple hundred people here ready to watch this. So, I mean, that, that – but I, but I also think back, too, to what you said with, with the old field, because I, I do remember the old field. Now, by the time I got to Marshall, they couldn't open the windows in towers anymore. And <laughs> I could just imagine, like, say, an outfielder for the other team or something, hearing this voice from way up above somewhere going, Yeah. It's like, who is saying that to me? I was like, where is this voice coming from that is just – writing everything I'm doing I mean, that that had to be that had to be pretty spectacular to be able to have something like that it was and occasionally it wasn't only a voice sometimes it was toilet paper sometimes it was, <laughs> it, was it was crazy but it was a good crazy I mean it was a healthy competitive environment it was really nice I enjoyed That's the location yeah. of the field it was very very good so definitely some of the reasons as to why they can now no longer open the windows over there Probably. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. But, you know, um, what, when you finished your career, you're the career leader in hits, run, score, double, stolen bases, you know, and some of those marks are still up there and some of them lasted for years as well before they were broken. You know, you were also voted all conference four times. What are you most proud of from your playing career? From my playing career? I think just I'm most proud of the experiences that I had. You know, it's not so much about the statistics or the, you know, the, the awards that I received myself because, of course, I couldn't have done that without the push of my teammates and my coaches. So, you know, I think that what I'm most proud of is just the experience um, as far as on the field, you know, being able to travel, to be able to play at that level, at, you know, those different teams that I was able to. You know, I swore when I was traveling all the time to North Carolina that was going to be my home. I fell in love with North Carolina. Um, so I think it's just the experiences and the things, you know, the ability to be able to see that Southern part, you know, I don't know that I would have went to a lot of those places. So that's what I'm most proud about is being able to stick it out for four years at the collegiate level and, you know, being able to just sort of soak up all those experiences that I had the opportunity to do. So then what are you most proud of just as a whole 
from your time as a student athlete? Again, I think just making it through those four years, and I was lucky enough to um, complete four years and have a little bit of my second degree. So I got my finance and business law degree, along with probably my first year of education um, under my belt in four years, debt free. So, you know, I don't think too many people can say that and and that, um, you know, couldn't have been possible without that opportunity to play softball. So. Well, I definitely couldn't say I finished debt free, unfortunately, but then again, I, I didn't, I didn't play ball. So, you know, I didn't have that opportunity either. I, I got in at the radio station, no scholarships there. You're just volunteering your time. Yeah. Off sort of stuff. But A lot of time too, I'm sure. It was, it was, but uh, you know, it's, it's worth it with some of the things I've been able to keep doing. So now go, going back to uh, what you did on the field again, now I'm not sure why you're not in the hall of fame yet, but what would it mean to you to get that phone call from the athletic director saying that you will be inducted into the hall of fame? You know, I'd be thrilled, of course, you know, um, and I'd be appreciative that someone is, that someone is acknowledging, um, you know, the accomplishments that I did, you know, um, achieve during those four years. Um, I'm not expecting it, but if it did happen, I would be thrilled and um, honored to be a part of, you know, that elite, the, the elite athletes that, you know, are already inducted into the Hall of Fame. So. Uh, one more question, just looking back to with as far as being an alum with the softball program, what has it meant to you to be able to see the work that this program puts into trying to connect all of its alum? You know, not just say, oh, we got to make sure that we pay attention to the championship team from 2013 or the team that got ranked in 2017, but wanting to get all of you together. You know, the one that won the tournament in 95, everybody in between, beginning, middle, end, just trying to connect everybody together. You know, um, Coach Shonda did an amazing job um, as far as trying to bring everybody together, um, and that's from 1994 all the way through. Um, she and I believe the Williams sisters had a lot to yes. do with that. And if anybody else had a part in that, I'm sorry, um, that I'm not mentioning you, but I do appreciate it because, you know, as you go through life, your priorities change. And, um, especially when you have children and you sort of get consumed with what they're doing, and in supporting them and, and what they want to do. So, you know, one time, one weekend a year, I know that that's reserved for me time um, with Belle. And, and I'm always hopeful that the other teammates from that time period will come because it's generally usually Belle and I only there uh, from, from our time period. Yeah. Um, uh, as far as those, those, those four years. Um, so I'm hope that I understand they live, you know, thousands of miles away. So, uh, and I know it's difficult, but I always hope that, you know, sometime that they'll be able to get back and we'll all get together again. Um, but Belle and I do, we, we reserve that weekend. We text each other as soon as we get the information from the, the Williams or, or mm -hmm. coach Shonda. And we always say, okay, we're meeting here. You know, this is, we're good. And then, you know, there's a few players, uh, Chrissy or Amy, uh, sometimes Stephanie, We'll, we'll text them or, or, or Missy Frost and, and let them know, you know, we miss them and we wish they were there. And um, so, you know, it, it's really nice to have that camaraderie. And even with the newer players and the ones that came there right after us, it's just nice to see them because a lot of them, they were on those recruiting trips with us. And, you know, yeah. they, they remember us as the people, you know, why they're there or, or that helped them, encourage them to go there. So, um no, the alumni program is, is, you know, really, really nice. And again, it just gives us that opportunity to stop and think and reminisce and, and sort of catch up and what everybody's doing now. And, and you know, it, it's nice. Well, that was one thing when I talked to Amanda when she said how they tried to get as many to come back as they could when the new field opened up in the 2008 season. And she said she and Shonda kind of got together and said, you know what, I – other than obviously the games that weekend because we got absolutely embarrassed by Houston, but <laughs> we won't talk about that. Yeah. But she, but she's, you know, she and Shauna got together and they said, you know, this was absolutely wonderful to have, to have this. And so they kind of thought, you know, what if we could make this an every year thing? And so Amanda said, so we tried to do it, you know, whether it be homecoming or obviously hall of fame weekend, if, if somebody from the softball program was being inducted, 
unfortunately this year got canned, but you know, we hope that uh, once, once season comes back around that we'll be able to do that and, you know, then have everybody come back and, you know, be able to watch a softball game or two that weekend. So I, it's, she, she really just kind of said it was, you know, th this was so much fun. We really need to try and keep this going. And even after Amanda left here, I know. She, yeah. She's like, she put a lot of effort. She put a lot of effort into it. And it's very, oh, appreciated. Yeah. Um, because it's a lot of fun. And it's not only we're getting together. Um, like we usually get together that Friday night, just as a, like a dinner, mm -hmm. a social hour. And then, you know, the next day is the games and the, you know, the alumni game and the football oh, yeah. game and things like that. Um, and then they give you the opportunity and they always have something like an apparel, either a hat or a shirt mm -hmm. you know, that you can purchase. And it's just nice to be able to explain that to your kids and what that means to you. Like, um, and for them to put so much effort in that and, making sure that everybody was included that could make it is, is really nice and appreciate it. Well, I, they've always been big on history too. Not again, not just from when they played, but trying to get everybody together with it. So, because you're, you're all still a part of the family of the program. So I finally, is there anything else you would like to share with the viewers, whether it be advice or just another part of your journey that you would like people to know about? You know, I just think that if anybody's interested in, in playing at the next level that, you know, you've got to realize what you're getting into, that it is a full-time job um, and it's hard work and dedication and there's a lot of commitment that goes involved, that's involved with that. But, um, you know, what you take away from that experience is priceless. The memories that you make, the friends that you make, but, you know, even if you don't talk to them that often, they're there with you a lifetime. Um, and I would encourage you to take that next step. So that's what I, that's the advice that I would give. Okay. All right. Well, I, Carrie, thank you so much for joining me here on the MUSB dugout. I, I really appreciate it. This was great. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. So ladies and gentlemen, Carrie Hinkle, one of the originals of the MUSB family, also one of just five players in Southern Conference history to be named All-Conference all four years. And hopefully one day we'll find her rightful place in the Marshall Athletics Hall of Fame. Again, Carrie, thank you. Thank you.